Well, kia ora, good afternoon. Welcome to North Harbour Stadium. This is the Kate Shepherd Cup Final for 2021 being played in March 2022. Yes, good old COVID has seen the schedule disrupted somewhat, but we are here. The game is ready to be played and one by one of these two sides, Wellington United and Hamilton Wanderers. Yes, they're going for glory. Both teams have never won the Kate Shepherd Cup before, so a bit of history in the offering today. Glenn Lama's my name with me, five-year football firm between 2003, 2007, Priscilla Duncan. Priscilla, great to have you with us. And uh, I bet you're in the dressing room right now mentally trying to get the, the amped and the excitement up for what's uh, going to be a good game today. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. Tēnā koe and tēnā koutou to everyone who's able to join us for today's uh, coverage. And I have been here myself in a couple of these finals, and it's a, a special game, you know, to uh, be able to have bragging rights of the best club in the country, even if it is a bit delayed, as you mentioned, disrupted. Um, but at least we're here and we're playing, and one of these is going to be a, a first-time champion of this competition. Absolutely. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing which team will come through today. All right, let's have a look at the two sides uh, that are lining up today. Here is the Wellington United the side of the strong. All of the starting 11 have played National League football with seven, including two on the bench, having played for Capital in last year's South Central Series. Now, among the key players to keep your eye on, number four, Zoe Barrett. Number three, Hope Gilchrist is the captain today. Other key players, number eight, Emma Main, who has electric pace. Pepe Oliver-Bell, a young striker on the rise. She wearing number 11. She scored three goals in the South Central Series. The coach is Micah Rautahuli, but chatting to us today is the assistant coach, Elliot Taylor. Well, Elliot, first time in the Kate Shepherd Cup final for Wellington United. How significant is that for yourself and the players? It's huge, not only for us, but for the club. I think it's 125 years the club's been around and it's the first time the women have been in the final. Um, some of them, it's the third semi-final they've been in and they finally won one, so it's huge. And it's huge for players that have played for the club before, the fact that this lot have got to the final. So for us, it's big. And it's been a while since the team from Wellington's been in the final, so we hope to represent them well as well. And how's the prep gone this week for the game? Good, except for Thursday, obviously, lots of rain in Wellington, so we didn't train. But um, as good as it could be, obviously, it's pre-season as well as a final, so it's a little bit difficult. But um, the girls trained well. Um, we got over our little COVID bout, so everyone seems to be fit and ready to go. So, yeah, we're good. And uh, what are you expecting from um, the opposition today? Well, any team that's from this part of the country is a strong team. Um, I watched them play Coastal Spirit. They beat a very, very good Coastal Spirit side. Um, so we've got the utmost respect. We know some of the players are very, very good. So for us, it's about respecting them, but also making sure we do what we do because we can't worry about them too much. But any team from here, we respect. Um, yeah. All the best this afternoon. Hoping for a good game. Yeah, we hope for as well. Hope to have a little bit of a crowd. Um, girls and women's football week. So hopefully we get a few of them along and a few people from Wellington. I know there's a couple in a bar over the road. So hopefully we see a few people here. And thank you guys. Thanks very much. Well, there we are, Elliot Taylor. Hope those people in the bar have made their way to North Harbour Stadium. Let's have a look at the Hamilton Wanderers side. All of the starting 11 have uh, played national football as well, so lots of experience in this team. Key players include number five, Michaela Foster, the daughter of All Blacks coach Ian Foster. Number three, Lisa Evans. 13, Tiana Hill. All have played for New Zealand at underage level. And then there's number 19, Helen Arjomundi. 28 games for the football ferns. A noted goal scorer. Keep your eye on her. The coach is Scott Bilt. Well, Scott, a final prior to the season starting. How strange is that for you and the players? Yeah, it's a little bit of an interruption, to be fair, but it's um, it's, it's nice to be where we are. Um, this has been six months in the making now, as you know. Um, so good to go to Coastal Spirit a month or so ago. Um, I thought we'd, we'd be here a little bit sooner than what we, what we are, but uh, it's, yeah, looking forward to the opportunity. And how's your squad shaped up for the game today? Uh, you will be at uh, uh, full strength today, Fred. Um, Obviously, we, we move into the 2022 season and we'll lose a couple of players, but uh, the squad remains the same as uh, 2021. And uh, what sort of game are you expecting today? Well, we don't, don't know, to be fair. We've done a little bit of research. Um, it'll be tough. Finals always are. Um, but, yeah, I think we'll, uh, we're, we're quietly confident. Well, all the best this afternoon. Yeah, cheers, Fred. Thanks. Scott built there. 
So the two coaches are all happy, the two teams all happy, and now we are all set here at North Harbour Stadium. And conditions look pretty good for a game of football. The pitch is looking in pretty good, Nick. Temperature hovering around uh, 19 degrees Celsius. Uh, just a light breeze coming in from the northeast. Partly cloudy skies. We're not expecting any rain. And uh, thankfully, Priscilla, that uh, those nasty, gusty winds we've had for a week up here have dissipated, and uh, we're, we're going to have a good game of football today. Yeah, nice that the uh, gates have opened and got a little crowd in there as well, uh, but short notice with the uh, changes and the relaxing of the um, you know, conditions. But as you said, I, I was at the White Ferns game, uh, World Cup cricket uh, a few days ago, uh, not such good conditions at Eden Park there. So it um, looks like a light breeze here and, um, yeah, wonderful kind of weather to play football in. Absolutely. And... It's just great that we're getting to have this game today. The referee is Lindsay Robinson to be assisted by Daniel Neville, Ali's Clipsham, and the fourth official is Beth Rattray. So all in readiness now for the conclusion of the, well, I was going to say the 2021 season with the 2022 season, I think, starting already in some places in the country. And finally, we are getting towards the end of the business end. And in fact, it's great credit, I think, to New Zealand football to get these games completed. In fact, any sporting body in New Zealand at the moment getting these games and leagues completed under these COVID times is, is quite an achievement. Yeah, and speaking with some of the Hamilton Wanderers players this week, it's been one of the challenges for them because few of their players are actually off to different clubs for this uh, season uh, just based on you know people relocating and, and life circumstances so uh, they've tried their best it's been quite a challenge to all train together but also marks the kind of end of this campaign they've been together for a few years now so uh, everything to play for for this uh, Hamilton club who I'm told by New Zealand football have never won a national league title at their club level. All right, so Wellington United going to be in the orange and the blue, and the blue and the black, it's going to be Hamilton Wanderers. And if you're in the Hunter Lodge in Kelvin, uh, we've got to give you a shout out. So I'm sure, hopefully, it's packed in there today, watching uh, all the, or having all the Wellington United supporters in there for this game today. Hope you enjoy the game, guys, and uh, I'm sure your team will do you proud as we're all set for kickoff now. So Hamilton Wanderers will get this game underway. The Cape Shepherd Cup final for 2021. Neither of these two teams has won the title. Hamilton Wanderers coming into this, having a 3-1 win over Coastal Spirit, the Christchurch side, and Wellington United beating the defending champion Eastern Suburbs from Auckland 1-0 in their semi-final. And straight away, Hamilton Wanderers onto the attack here. What a great pass to, her, to that player. And it looks like it's gone out for a goal kick, but a wonderful early ball through. Yeah, good start by Hamilton Wanderers. Uh, similar to their semi-final game down in Christchurch, did very well at English Park to dominate a, a good Coastal Spirit side. And they look to be uh, hungry for a go on the attack early here. So Simons is the goalkeeper for Wellington United. We saw her start all six games for Capital Football in the South Central Series at the tail of last year. Interesting to see how each team tactically approached that game. Now that pass is not the best and having an early opportunity there in front of goal. So Hamilton Wanderers, nervous start for Wellington United. Yeah, they do look a bit nervy here. I guess they've travelled up. It's always hard to play an away game. Uh, I guess it's away for both of these teams. But uh, Helen Anjumandi, the striker, football fern, former football fern, um, just getting a couple of early chances there and uh, well blocked in the end for her shot after the intercept. So Elliot is going to take this free kick for Wanderers. Foster. Making a run forward here. And it's been blocked, so back to Foster it comes, who again is looking for the direct route to the strikers. And it is cut out this time, and now a bit of space here for Wellington United to come forward. It's a good pass. It's cut out by Elliott, and it will be a Wellington United throw-in. Coming over to take the throw-in is Main. Highly rated player, Emma Main. Looking away with Grange on that right-hand side. Oh, yeah. 
Shamrock's taken a slight deflection off Shannon Trebs. So more opportunity here for Wellington United. Nicely controlled at the top there. Simons it is. Hey, again, and now Grange has it. Challenged on the ball there by Trebs. Having a good battle early. Just a slight uh, connection there on number 21 for Hamilton Wanderers. Another great ball. Yes, the cross to the far post, but Simons has got it nicely under control, the young keeper. Yeah, Simons should have a lot of confidence coming out of that semi-final, keeping a clean sheet against a very good Eastern Suburbs side down in Wellington the other week. Reigning champions, uh, just a 1-0 scoreline. They didn't have a lot of the ball that game, Wellington United, but defended very well and uh, caught them on the counter so they won't mind too much if they're um, not keeping the ball as much as uh, Hamilton today they've got some good young strikers who can uh, attack on the counter oh, that's good pressure yeah, good challenge there and uh, Hamilton Wanderers have got it well, one by Barrett Barrett coming through here for Wellington United good young player She'll take the throw in as well. Just uh, 19 years of age. Really quite experienced at National League level. And that could be the first corner, and it is. Yeah, Zoe Barrett was one of those who played well on the back line against uh, Eastern Suburbs. Just her older sister, Katie Barrett, used to play in this team. I think she's... Um uh, now forced out due to injury, but uh, commentated the semi-final. So shout out to Katie, now development office officer for Capital Football. Well, here's the corner. Oh, and there's a shot. Oh, just wide it was. It was a good hitter.
Although getting very close again was Hamilton United there. Here's another opportunity. And uh, the Wanderers, unfortunately, that time go high, wide and handsome. And yeah, just before that corner, a really good chance for Helen Ajamandi uh, getting in on goal. I think it was Zoe Barrett with a crucial um, uh, intersection or a block uh, as we see a player down now injured. But Hamilton Wanderers are very dangerous on their corners uh, with Michaela. Uh, Michaela Foster putting in very good balls. They scored one of their goals uh, on the semi-final. She often scores straight from corners, uh, so Wellington United will not want to give too many corners away from from uh, for, during this game. Yes, you want me to go on? Yeah. So 27 minutes played, still nil all in the Kate Shepherd Cup final. Wellington United in the orange. So Molly Simons and a couple of her teammates just trying to talk things through here. You can see Hope Gilchrist there wearing the captain's armband today for Wellington United. They seem to swap their captains around a little bit. Rosie Wilde was uh, captain uh, for the semi-final and uh, Asher Strom is often a uh, captain as well. They've got a handful of players who have got over 100 games for their club. Um, some of them like Danny Olsen with more than 100 goals as well. So this group of players have been together a, a long time. They were in the semi-finals of this competition's three years running before you know winning uh, against Eastern Suburbs so I'm sure they're all delighted to, to be in this final and of course no Wellington team has won uh, the Kate Shepherd Cup before and it's well, almost 30 year history so everything to, to play for. It's incredible so just a uh, little like Sarah Alder just getting some attention there number 14 just going off futsal fern player and they're just going over the Maybe just checking that. So it looks like, so it looks like a left ankle. Well, Wellington United doing well to not concede a, a goal on a couple of occasions right there. Simons will get play underway once again as United will build from the back. This is Wild, one of the capital football players in the South Central series last year as was the keeper Simons I believe she was a goalkeeper of the series actually yeah very solid she never missed a game for Wellington United last year either played all 17 games that they featured in Dykstra Flipping it back now. Dykstra is an interesting player. Priscilla, she is the only player out there today who's actually won the Kate Shepherd Cup with uh, Dunedin Technical in 2018 before she moved north to Wellington. And here comes a nice move down the left. And Barrett, who's pushing a bit further on that left hand side forward in this game, looks to keep the pressure on this Hamilton Wanderers defence. Barrett once again, good work from her. This might fall for Wellington United. And in the end, got bold, has it for Wanderers. It's a nice ball in space. Wellington, no good challenge coming in there from. Foster. Target on the far post. Good stall for here for Wellington United. Good challenge coming in there from number 16, Tiana Hill, for Hamilton Wanderers. Just quells the threat just for a moment. United again. And then that's going to be cut out by Evans. Archimandi and Fullerton up front for Wanderers, uh, for Wanderers. Yes, just couldn't quite uh, capitalise on that as we see a corner being conceded. Good work by Hill. She had to really push back fast there. Yeah, and she's stayed down. Unfortunately, hopefully she's OK. But you're seeing a glimpse of that speed from Pippi Oliver-Bell. The youngster for Wellington United scored some crucial games in uh, this campaign. She's a top goal scorer for Wellington United alongside... Uh, Gemma Robertson with five goals for the Cape Shepherd Cup and uh, showing her pace down the wing there. So corner here for Wellington United and unfortunately it's gone over the byline so Wanderers have a goal kick. So 14 minutes to play until half time. Nothing to split these teams 
so far. It's been a fairly even battle as well. United more possession. It's Grange. Good to see players like Grange starting. She wasn't one of the starters in the semi final. Emma Main and Danny Olsen also missed that game. So they definitely were not at full strength when they played that East the Suburb side. But it looks like they're almost there with their starting 11. I mentioned Gemma Robertson before, who's not playing. Uh, I believe she's coming back from uh, illness. But uh, otherwise, this Wellington United team have, seem to have all their starters back. Yeah, I'm sure we. Hopefully we'll see Robertson and also Gemma Catherwood, who's on the bench too. Another very promising young player. Bit of depth on that Wellington United bench today. See if they come into the game in the second half. Krebs with that throw in for Wanderers. And they'll keep possession. That's ricocheted and Emma Main has it. So good with the ball at her feet. A pretty decent passer as well. Couldn't quite link up there with I think that's Olsen. Yeah, Olsen seems to be playing down the right hand side with Sarah Sarah Aldo, as you mentioned, the futsal fern uh, up top and uh, Pepe Oliver Bell providing that pace out on the left hand side, a sort of a 4 3 3. Uh, for Wellington United up against a 3-5-2 which Hamilton Wanderers uh, traditionally play. Nice challenge from Grange before but Wanderers still have possession and they'll have thrown. In fact it will be Wellington United who will have the ball. And a Fullerton on, on good good touch uh, of the ball there. Good target her and Helena Jamandu in the Hamilton Wanderers side. A bit of a running gag in the team, the combined age of 63. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but both uh, former, you know, New Zealand ferns, uh, or age group at least for Anna Falls. I remember her in the 2008 Under-17 Women's World Cup, the inaugural one that uh, was hosted at one of the venues, of course, North Harbour Stadium. So she's 30 now, but good to see her still playing at the top level for the club. Absolutely. Nicely flicked on there by Olsen. Now Olsen has it rather. Oh, just couldn't quite get that one-two pass there from Sarah Alder. And if that was on target, that might have been interesting for Wellington United. In the end, comfortably cut out by Elliott. And now Hill coming forward, using the ball as well. So Wellington United enjoying a good period of play here, Priscilla, in possession. Yeah, unfortunately, before those uh, technical issues, we, you know, I guess the starting first five or six minutes, Hamilton and Wanderers really looked to be the, the stronger team, but Wellington United definitely coming into this and another nice little back heel from Maine. Maine and also the player looking forward there was Alda. Maine has just got to be watched. She's got some good skills. And as I touched on in the intro, she's so fast with the ball at her feet too. She'll be a threat with front foot running ball. And let's see what uh, Wellington United can do here. This is Grange with the throw in. Here's Main. Nicely cut out there. And is the corner conceded? Yes. No, it's not. Just saved. Good commitment at the back there. From Trebs. Looked a corner for all money. That's going to be Olsen once again with a throw in. It's got to be cleared effectively. It hasn't been and it's gone over the top. Good ball in there from Fran Grange, I think it was. Good to see the fullbacks getting up high in those positions for Wellington United. A couple of good cutout balls, uh, good, doing well at the back for Hamilton United, uh, Hamilton Wanderers rather, is uh, Tiana Hill, who's just re-signed for the club uh, the other week, and Helen Argimandi is also coming back for this season. Yeah, well that's great, because they are losing a couple of players to Auckland teams, aren't they? Two going to the Northern Rovers, I think another one going to Ellerslie. 
And a weird thing is, is they've already been training with their new teams, haven't they? Because the new season starts next week. Or might have even started this week, Priscilla. Yeah, some teams. I was chatting with Helen Ajumundi this week. She said it's been one of the challenges for this Hamilton team, actually, just to prepare for this game and the okay. unusual circumstances that it is. Uh, Chelsea Elliott and uh, Michaela Foster are both their, their central defenders are going to Northern Rovers. Um, so I think relocating uh, at the start of the season. So I guess uh, making the most of their talent right now is <laughs> hoping they can win this final for them. Well, exactly. And what a way to go out by winning a the Cape Shepherd Cup. So we'll see if that can be fulfilled here today at North Harbour Stadium. Sarah Carpenter, I believe she's also on the bench and has scored quite a few goals for... Hamilton is also uh, moving on uh, to Ellerslie this season. Uh, but then we've also got Grace Cox on the, the bench, who's actually travelled back from Melbourne, I believe. Uh, has already relocated there, but uh, come back for this um, to play in this final. Uh, daughter of Stephen Cox, who has been coaching this team up until late last year. Yes, indeed. Nicely cut out there by Trebs. That was good work from her. Marsha Mundy still sneaking, kind of sneaking around at the top there. That's all good strikers do. It's a nice ball. Wellington United once again back in possession. Barrett. Gets it back, but it's a nicely anticipated challenge. And Wanderers. Chance to out of here. Evans tries to find Fullerton. But Maine has got it under control for Wellington United. Nice composed play at the back there by Foster. Wellington United will get a throw in. Fullerton. Now Hill. It's a good ball going forward here. Nice run here. And I think that might be a goal kick. Good run forward there from Hill, I think, was it? Or was it Ollington, the captain? Maddie Ollington down that right-hand side. Unlucky not to get a corner, really, which I think she was, was aiming for. But she's one of those players who's been over in the US for a couple of years, played in New Jersey, uh, back playing at, at club level. Same with Tiana Hill, also played over in in the States at that college level. Feels very even, doesn't it, Priscilla? Very little between these two teams. Hey. One in the final is a great turn from Emma Main. Oh, just couldn't quite link up there. She was too fast. It's Trebs has got it. Nice control by Evans. Fullerton in there trying to win it here for Hamilton Wanderers. United coming forward again. Now Dykstra. That's a good ball. Players on side here. Nice ball into the centre. But again, the Hamilton Wanderers defence read that well. And nice composed defending. And now Foster has the chance to come forward here for Hamilton Wanderers. Evans in space. And chasing it through. Wild has it here for Wellington United. Still has it. Main dropping back. And now Wild once again. Main again. Loves to run with the ball. Can't quite, quite game so far. Well looked after is Bremer for Hamilton Wanderers. Gets it back under control and Byrne will slide it back to keeper Godbold. Now Godbold's an interesting player. She's one of these players that would have been uh, probably playing at a World Cup last year at the Under-17 World Cup. Priscilla, but unfortunately COVID put pay to that and now she's too old, of course. 
Yeah, there's a couple of uh, players in these two teams that have been affected by that, so pretty hard, I guess, to, ma to manage and, and know that you're in that squad but not be able to go off to these FIFA World Cups, but hopefully they can stay in the system and, and maybe make it into the under-20 teams. Here's a chance for Wellington United. But again, Foster, what excellent defending that was. She took up good position there, didn't she? She's a really, uh, just a rock for the Hamilton Wanderers side. Been really impressed with her in the semi-final and quarter-final. Um, just hardly lets anything get past her. She was a, a captain at under-17 level and also went to France with the uh, under-20 uh, for inside. Oh, she's part of a very solid Hamilton Wanderers defence. Chelsea Elliott looking quite dominant too in the defensive line. She's actually a converted striker. And I tell you, whoever came up with the idea to convert her into defender, well done to them. She looks more than comfortable here. Elliot, number 20. The other thing I like about Elliot and, and Foster is they're actually goal scoring threats as well on set pieces and, and getting up for corners. Uh, they're actually, you know, often in the kind of goal tally run runnings for the Northern, um, Northern Region League, even though they're central defenders. Playing that one forward was Byrne. Evans and Maine are having a nice battle in midfield, and there's a lovely ball from Maine. But again, there's Elliot again. You have to be really good to get past Elliot and Foster. As Wanderers sweep forward on that right hand side again, Maine with that tackle, and a good one it was too. Been really impressed with Emma Maine so far. I think she's had the most touches on the ball of anyone right across the from the back line and up into the attacking third you're really kind of making her presence known and making the most of this final after missing the, the semis and I, she was also out for almost a year i think from the 2020 21 season just come back into the fold the 22 year old and uh, i think she's really looking like to control things for this united side absolutely and she was she showed out too for capital football in that south central series too played four games late last year in that tournament Trebs with that throw in. Nicely controlled by Rosie Wild. But as much as we talk about the back line for the Hamilton Wanderers, Priscilla, this back line here of Wild and Gilchrist, Barrett, been going pretty well for Wellington United in the game so far. Some nice play. Coming forward here, Grange, out to Olsen. Main sneaking forward now. And it's deflected off Foster for a corner. So coming into the last minute of the first half. Maybe one last chance here for Wellington United. Coach built. Barking out instructions as any good manager does from the sideline. Two minutes of added time in this first half. Here's a chance, it's gone wide again. Off the head of one of those players. The score remains nil all with a couple of minutes to go before half time. United have stolen it away. Foster back in position. His main sneaking it away again, and a, I was going to say an outrageous shot. Maybe she just saw God bolt off her line a bit there, Priscilla. Yeah, worth a go. I think she announced her comeback uh, with a stunning long-range shot last year for Wellington United so she can definitely score from that kind of range and why not with only a minute left to play often when goals are scored in the finals absolutely often the time to be scoring them into the long ball there from Hamilton Wanderers worth the shout Simons was well aware and eyes open for her Lost by Alder there. 
And it has been, and now it's picked up by Fullerton. Foster. This is better from Hamilton. Wander is just keeping possession. You want to do that on a big field like North Harbour Stadium. We've played a few games on this field, and uh, they'll, you'll tire if you're defending for most of the game. So probably 10 or a dozen passes here to get that nice build-up play. Yeah, it's very good build-up play, isn't it? It's Byrne switching it back to Trebs. A little more ambitious, I think, from that range, <laughs> unless she was... Uh, Targeting Helen Ajamandi. Sorry if I call her Helen Collins. She's uh, changed her last name, of course, but uh, when I played with her back in the day, it was Collins. Absolutely. And that is half time. Very even first half here in the Kate Shepherd Cup final between Wellington United and Hamilton Wanderers. Both teams, remember, are trying to win their first ever title in the Kate Shepherd Cup. North Harbour Stadium, it's half time. Wellington United nil, Hamilton Wanderers nil. Well, it's half time here in the Kate Shepherd Cup final. Thank you for staying with us here at North Harbour Stadium. Wellington United and Hamilton Wanderers locked up at nil all at half time. What was a very even first half? Ben Lama here, Priscilla Duncan, former football fern with me. And uh, it's uh, it's hard to know who's got the ascendancy going into the second half, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's been a really even match so far. And I was mentioning that in the semi final, Wellington United were missing quite a few players. So. Full credit to the to those who actually did start that game because they got them into this final and uh, I think with their sort of full strength squad back, they've actually had probably some you know some of the better periods of play uh, with a few corners and um, Emma Main really controlling things in the middle of the park. Uh, you know, Hamilton Wanderers can always um, you know, hit Anna Fullerton and Helen Andromandi up front, but they just haven't had that great quality. Um, I guess distribution from the midfield through to them. So it's pretty evenly matched so far and uh, we'll hopefully we'll get some goals in the second half. Absolutely. And of course, Elliot and Foster looking very strong defensively for Hamilton Wanderers as well. So that has been a feature of the game, but Wellington United are well organized as well. Yeah, I think w with any kind of cup run, you need to have a good back line. And, and that's what both of these two teams have shown. Although, in saying that, one of the stats that Hamilton Wanderers won't be so happy with, they have conceded in every one of their Kate Shepherd Cup games. So they, they can be broken down. They like to press high. But I guess if you can you know, beat that press, then there are spaces in, in behind them. Uh, but both goalkeepers pretty experienced as well. They've started uh, all games for their clubs, so they've had real consistency in that kind of defensive area. Uh, but, you know, I think another a stat to mention, we haven't talked about it yet, but Helen Andromandi has 36 goals in this competition total. Uh, and she's only one behind the overall record, which is held by Katie Rood, who uh, played for Glenfield Rovers for a number of years. Uh, played, I think, well, a couple of years with her, and uh, she's off offshore now, playing, uh, been playing in Italy and England. Uh, so Helen, if she can score one today, she'll equal that record. And she has had at least one uh, very good chance so far. So that's pretty good, pretty exciting uh, record to, to break if she can do it. Oh, yeah, that'd be amazing if she could do it. Well, she's got 45 minutes to do it. Remember, neither of these two sides have ever won the Cape Shepherd Cup. So there's a big 45 minutes coming up here for the players. As referee Lindsay Robinson gets the second half underway. If you're just joining us, Wellington United on the ball at the moment in the orange. Hamilton Wanderers in the blue. And all the way back to Molly Simons, Wellington United's keeper. Here at North Harbour Stadium, got good weather today. Temperature just cooling off now in Auckland as we head towards halfway, uh, we're coming out the halfway stage through autumn now. Temperature around 21, 22 degrees. Still pretty pleasant for, should be a really interesting second half. Can one of these two teams string together a magical piece of play? Good intercept there by Pippi Oliver Bell. She's one of those players in the youth system that looking to train, I think, with the uh, Wellington Phoenix Academy down there in, in Wellington. Great setup, and you're seeing more and more youngsters come through that region, of course, with the professional team now as a pathway to look forward to. I guess players like that can uh, make their mark in, in games like today. Absolutely. And Al Oliver Bell deserves that too. She played really well in the South Central Series late last year for Capital Football. Just 17 years of age. And uh, 
real promising player for the future. But we've got Evans sneaking it in there for Hamilton Wanderers. There's a long range shot coming in here, but it's well wide. But still, Hamilton Wanderers looking solid when they get into this part of the field. Yeah. Wellington United won't mind uh, shots coming from that sort of distance, coming in from Caitlin Byrne, the 19-year-old. He's originally from Tauranga, but usually can uh, manage those kind of shots. But still good to see some attacking play from Hamilton in the second half. Absolutely. And that one's cut out by Strom. But it's still in the field of play. Now it's just dribbling over the sideline now. So a throw in here for Trebs. She uh, has plenty of power on those throw-ins as well. And it's still there. Ajamande oh, could have fallen for her, but Simons was there to stop the threat. Main, nice early touch from her. Just a slight uh, foul there on Ollington. Played in pretty good spirit so far as well. No yellow cards. I was, was going to say as well, Emma Main has looked just as good uh, going forward and also defending. Uh, but nice to see a final where there's not too much <laughs> aggression and, and no cards just yet. Yes, yet. <laughs> you never know. Elliot plays it forward here for Wanderers. Evans. Wanderers again will try from the back. All oh, that pass nicely intercepted, and Maine has it. United again, co composed at the back. Nothing to flash from them. Oh, that pass, just as I say that, has gone to Aja Mundi, and that challenge needed to be made. Good challenge coming in there, and Barrett clears it for Wellington United. And now Main squeezes nicely between two players. And this is looking good for Wellington United. Sweeping forward here. And across just overcooked a tad. Yeah, going too close to the goalkeeper there, but nice uh, counter-attack from Wellington United after almost yeah, giving up a chance at the other end. Helen Najamandi really put her head down there, and I thought she was going to get the shot away. Looked very determined. I think it was Rosie Wilde stepping in for a crucial tackle at the back. Yeah, that needed to be made as I touched on. And now Ajamandi chasing that one again. But Simons, not the biggest goalkeeper, is she? But she does everything very well. And here comes Wild again. It makes all the difference when you know your keeper's a good, solid, makes good, solid decisions. Yeah, and as you can see there, she's playing out from the back pretty well. She's confident with the ball at her feet. She's just a regular starter and, and uh, been playing well for the capital side as well. And part of an under-19 under New Zealand setup uh, travelled to, to Dallas uh, a couple of years back. So, you know, she's in the frame as well, perhaps, if she wants to kick on and, and play at a higher level. And streaking through there, but got bold. We'll clear it for Wanderers. Another thing you notice with the Spellington United side, a lot of them play futsal. Uh, just saw a, a nice touch again. I don't mean to mention her again, but Emma Main sort of rolling her, her foot over the ball. You can sort of see that futsal uh, experience coming through. And a couple of them uh, have played at the top level. I think we've mentioned uh, the Francesca Grange has, has played at that level and also uh, Sarah Alder up top. A long ball through there. And Oliver Bell can't catch up with that one. So... Wanderers back in possession. So five minutes played. Still no goals in this game. And very well matched, these two, two sides, as Tiana Hill brings it forward here. Former under-20s representative for New Zealand. There's Oliver Bell. There's Grange playing it through. This is better from Wellington United. And here comes Oliver Bell. Just one player in the centre there, and plenty of blue jumpers. Now what a wonder, it's got back in good numbers there, Priscilla. Well, that's a lovely turn, and Ashamandi 
Stretching those legs again. There's a crack. Oh, she just can't quite get it on target. Good run from her, though. As you mentioned, 33-year-old stretching her legs. Full credit. And uh, also, she's comfortable on left and right foot. A dangerous player. And have to take her head off. Uh, she's, she's had a child in between. Uh, had a big break and has an 18-month-old at home. Having kids myself and then uh, not really wanting to go back, uh, <laughs> I um, take my hat off to her. Well, uh, I better mention Helen's daughter, Amelia. I was, uh, I was threatened with my life if I didn't mention her. Apparently, Amelia has got uh, some great skills for an 18-month-old. So look out for that name in the future. We'll see down the track. But uh, she loves uh, being around this team and, of course, watching her mum play. Wellington United coming forward again, but uh, again, that strong defensive line from Hamilton Wanderers. Proving hard to crack. Foster it was clearing that one. Arjumandu was one of those players who went early on to the States and, and did, I think, the four, full four years over in Tennessee, I believe. Met her husband there, convinced him to come back to New Zealand. So. Good that we've still got her in the talent system and, and passing on her wisdom to these younger players at Hamilton. Well, that's bouncing nicely for Helen Ajamandi. Can she squeeze through here? And it's saved by Simons. Close call there. But there's Ajamandi's skill somehow finding a way through some heavy traffic, and that was pretty decent save. Clearly the best chance of the game so far. And we're just mentioning her, and look at her strength, just sort of pushing her way through the two defenders there. A nice touch down on her left in, uh, uh, thigh, and I really thought she was going to squeeze it past Simons there, but full credit to the goalkeeper. What a great save. So corner here. Four players in the six-yard box. Another couple in the penalty area for Hamilton Wanderers. Foster takes it. Oh, it's very close to going in again. That could have gone anywhere. Asha Mundy, then Simons gets rid of it. Not with much conviction. So... The pressure will stay on the team in orange. Looks like Chelsea Elliott at the back post. They're almost getting her head on it. These balls coming in from Michaela Foster we've talked about already. Always dangerous. If I was Wellington United, I would have been practicing defensive corners all week. But we heard from their assistant coach before the game. They couldn't train on Thursday due to the Wellington weather. But uh, hopefully they have been uh, practicing for these. Well, that was a great corner by Foster. And here she is over this side of the field. So what she's like off the left foot looks pretty decent and it's been saved right on the byline and just a throw and conceded with some good pressure being applied here by Hamilton Wanderers Fullerton tries to hook it over can't get that one to where she wanted it to go. Bill plays it forward, and that one, Fullerton just couldn't quite get a good connection. And Simon's comfortable on the ball again. Really good spell of pressure here from Hamilton Wanderers. The position is still quite equal, I'd say, in the second half, but they look slightly more uh, with a few more attacking options and, and breaking the defensive line of, of Wellington United. So we'll see how the Wellingtonians can respond here. Needs a good spell of position to, to wrestle back this one. Dykstra finding Pippi Oliver Bell and now Barrett. And wider today, equally at home in the central defensive position as well. And left back today. It's beautiful control by Wild. How good was that? Wellington United sweep forward. Well, oh, there's a chance and it's gone in. It's a goal. Wellington United have scored and they've taken the lead. What a finish to the far post. And it's gone against the run of play as well. Hamilton Wanderers have been dominating those last few minutes. But it's Wellington United who take the lead by one goal to nil. Check out the flick to the far post. I think it's from Alder. Great goal. Excellent there from Wellington United. We've talked about their skill on the counter-attack, and I think it was Danny Olsen running down on the right-hand side. 
finding a perfect cross, pinpoint cross through to Sarah Alder and uh, got the header just uh, downward as, as it's always hard to say for a goalkeeper. Uh, perfect and as you say against the run of play but we know runs United uh, can do that. They did that against Eastern Suburbs as well. A great goal by Alder and uh, she's a noted go goal scorer. In fact that's just her second goal of the campaign but uh, she did bang in another six last season in 16 games mainly used off the substitutes bench in fact for Wellington United mostly through last year Sarah Alder but showed that she's got some skills that direction of that header was beautiful too wasn't it perfect yeah very hard for goalkeepers to get down uh, fish quick reactions and she has scored another very crucial goal in this campaign I think it was round three um, extra time against Maris with only what two minutes to play so Wellington United have uh, some really good memories to draw on for this Kate Shepherd Cup campaign they had in round two and round three had to go to extra time one against Crory and the other one Palmerston North Marist so they might just sort of think this is their year yes it's funny how things work out like that sometimes I remember Grand Slam tennis champions winning titles but being match point down in early rounds and coming through and saving the match points and going on a win and then win the whole thing so sometimes it's just how it plays out so let's see what happens with Hamilton Wanderers here too now to Priscilla it's going to be interesting to see how they play from here now that they're a goal down. Yeah, and perhaps haven't been tested quite so much in the Kate Shepherd Cup games, although they did face uh, Alice Lee and, and Auckland United, so they've, they've, they've beaten some really good Auckland teams along the way. But haven't really been uh, down in those games, so very interesting to see how they react. Exactly. Well, that was a good run by Evans, but she just couldn't quite link up with a teammate, but it's still here for Tiana Hill. He's, uh, they have a crack from long range and sometimes those ones that bounce just before the keeper can be tricky for them to take but Simons look very comfortable and she's not put a foot wrong in the game Molly Simons beautifully controlled there by Ollington Foster once again Here comes Foster again. She's going to have a trace from long range and it's just wide as well. Simons was beaten there. Wow, that was impressive from Foster. And I think we're about to have our first substitution. Let's have a look at Foster again. Heads up there and then maybe she can just see simons was off her line and simons she was deeply concerned about that long range shot well we have we talked about their threat from a number of players it's not just uh, helen um, ajamandi up top there's those central defenders who get forward and uh, michaela foster equally happy on her left and right foot and they, we might see a bit more of that as they uh, try and get the equalizer I've been told Sarah Carpenter has come on for Hamilton Wanderers. There she is, number six. So she's on for Anna Fullerton. So Carpenter's taken the 18 or the uh, the striker's position with Fullerton off now. Carpenter, an 18-year-old. Uh, players originally from Pukakohi. And moving to Ellerslie straight after this game. Foster concedes the free kick. And it looks like uh, we saw a shot there. A couple of Wellington United players preparing uh, preparing to come on too so we've got olive lynch gerard who's come on and dykstra has been replaced by lynch gerard and barrett has come off and Gemma catherwood has come on an 18 year old and she is catherwood coming on here and as you can see lynch gerard lynch gerard a promising player coming through the Wellington Girls College system, just 16 years of age. And uh, Catherwood, the 18 year old, of course, a uh, South Central player for Capital last year and uh, off to Louisiana soon. Former under 16 New Zealand secondary schools rep. So, pretty decent uh, player coming on there, Priscilla. Gemma Catherwood. Yeah, a bit of uh, youth infusion for both of these sides as well. Gemma Catherwood was one I expected could have actually started. Uh, she scored a screamer in that South Central series late last year. I think goal of the week for that uh, competition. 
with a left foot strike from uh, 40 yards out. So, you know, she's also a goal scoring threat. And the Hamilton Wanderers, Sarah Carpenter, has been used a lot uh, for them on the bench and, and scored a, a number of goals. So she's also a good threat. Flat goes up there. Oliver Bell just sneaking through a little too quickly. Interesting to see if there's any other changes as we see Oliver Bell come down this left hand side. But they did switch her over to the right in the semi final. She came off that right uh, wing to score the only goal of that, that game. So, may see some other kind of tactical changes as well as the game goes on. There's not much wrong with the tactics really of Hamilton Wanderers. It's just one brilliantly taken opportunity, which is. Proved the difference so far between these two teams. That's really it, isn't it? Yeah, and Wellington United are right where they want to be. They've got that goal now. Their central defenders are experienced and, and hyped up for this game. They've been together as a unit for a number of years and uh, never made this final, but uh, I think they'll have this kind of self-belief they can hang on here. Nicely flipped on. Wellington. I think it's gone out for a corner. It has. Chance here for Foster to maybe swing in one of these dangerous corners again. Yeah, it was from this side against Coastal Spirit down in, in Christchurch that uh, they scored one of their three goals in the semi-final. So she's got another chance here to put in a good ball. She hardly ever misses, really, just hitting that zone. And Chelsea Elliott and Helen Ajamandi to the tall timbers to aim for. And they're both lurking around the far post. Just out of shot there. They are just on the corner there of the six yard box. Make a run in now as Foster takes this corner. Just overcooked that one just a touch. So Trebs is just going to have to go back and I was going to say settle it down, but she had a crack. Again, can come through, see if they can build something in transition here. Clean challenge by Caitlin Byrne. It's good skills by Byrne to still keep the ball. Well done. And she just couldn't quite link up with Carpenter. Monday again proving useful up front. Hey. Two coming into the game pretty nicely now. That was Catherwood's ball. Main. It's Main. The skills of Main are significant. Nicely created chance there for Main. Whoops, she's just standing there watching the ball there that time though. Oliver Bell. Oh, that's a beautiful challenge. And how good was that tackle from Bremner? Jumandi just offside. Really good from the youngster in the middle there for Hamilton Wanderers. And Jordana Bremner. She started all games for this club side during the Kate Shepherd Cup. Only 18. One for the future. She gets about her work, really. And as we see, I think it's. Emma Main, who I believe has struggled with chin splints, if I'm correct, in the past, but hopefully none of that coming back. Yeah, shin splints are not pleasant, are they? Yeah, I've experienced them myself for a little while, but as the both teams, I guess, will take the might make the most of this, <laughs> catching a, a breather, and, and we know that fitness will play a part for sure. It's almost like a preseason game. There's so much disruption with this this competition. Of course, they'll be relieved that they're even being able to play this final. But uh, North Harbour Stadium is actually quite a big field, and we'll see uh, if either of these two sides sort of start to tire in the later stages. Well, we saw that in the Chatham Cup final just a few weeks ago. Similar circumstances leading into that game as well and there's a great ball for oliver bell and now she can run oliver bell just holding up the ball a little bit nicely timed pass and unfortunately it's been deflected wide for a corner good play by wellington united and that's what we have talked about with hamilton 
pressing high, you can actually find those pockets in behind. And uh, it was a good attacking kind of first touch, but I thought she was could have just taken another one and gone for goal herself, but did uh, find a teammate or at least a deflection to, to win the corner. So, let's see what happens here. Still there for Wellington United. And it's a goal kick. Pepe Oliver Bell, we've talked a bit about her already. Coming down this left hand side, she's an exciting prospect really for New Zealand football. She's also part of uh, the New Zealand Maori youth team. Ngahine Fana Poikiri. And, um, you know, represented them last year. So quite cool that she's part of that setup. Absolutely. Well, she'll be keen to contribute to this team. Remember, if you're just joining us, Sarah Alda is the goal scorer here in the second half for Wellington United in this Kate Shepherd Cup final. 23 minutes to go. Feels like we could have some more drama coming in this game as Catherwood. It forward now comes Wellington United and another fantastic ball being played through there. It's Danny Olsen over that far side. Another one of these players who has 100 caps for Wellington United. She actually reached uh, the 100 goal mark with only 97 caps. So she's also a threat if she can get into the middle a little bit more. But Sarah Alder taking up that space at the moment. Oh, it's pretty decent of Olsen, isn't it? Score 100 goals and play over 100 games she's still only 21 here's Wellington United again and it's harmlessly going over the byline this time amazing to think Wellington have never won this competition when you think about some of the players that have come through but I think with that Wellington Phoenix Academy set up now and, and this team in particular United have been together for a long time it's good to see another a, a team outside of Auckland um, you know be up there with a, with a chance of winning it it's just a third time in a final that we haven't uh, seen in Auckland team. I think the other ones were in 1994-95. So both of these sides probably quite happy not to be facing an Auckland side t today. Well, Wellington United have been there or thereabouts, haven't they? They lost the semi-final to Dunedin Technical in extra time 1-0 in 2018. And then in 2019 lost the semi-final to Coastal Spirit also in extra time. And of course, in 2020, the competition wasn't played. So they've been there or thereabouts, haven't they? As we see the coach there, Maika Ratahuli, she was a former Melbourne victory player. She is uh, in the top 10 appearances for the for the club over in Australia, born in Australia. And um, as we mentioned Australia, I mentioned the final of the W League's taking place today, so. Yes, it is. And uh, I see we have a Kiwi representative in the Melbourne victory team, don't we? Claudia Bunge is playing, hopefully. Yes, be interesting. and uh, Paige Satchel for, for Sydney. Good to see a couple of New Zealanders playing in those in that game. Kicks off at six o'clock. Is that six o'clock tonight? Hopefully time we can. Time? Uh, yes, hopefully we can get home for that one. If this doesn't <laughs> go to extra time of penalties, but who knows? Well, we'll see. I must admit, at half time, I did feel it looked like a penalty. Uh, a rather extra time was looking a distinct possibility with the e very evenness of that first half took something special to break this deadlock and we did see that from Alder. I like this from Wellington United though. Sometimes when you score a goal in the final you can sit back and then absorb a bit of pressure but they seem to actually want to stay on the ball and keep possession so they've actually had a good spell for these last sort of 15 minutes or so since the goal. Uh, full credit to them and, and Hamilton Wanderers just look a little frazzled not quite getting that rhythm that they need to to get the equaliser. It'll be interesting to see what Scott built can marshal up and now we've got the first player with cramp Emma Main still battling a little bit not what you want to be facing in the 70 minute mark but I'm sure they've got some on the bench that uh, can can come in if, if needed well, Gemma Robertson's still there that uh, looks like number 17 for Wanderers is coming on. That's Anamaya Taylor, youngest player on the field in this 
across the two teams. Just actually check that we uh, get the player who is uh, coming on here. Number 17 looks like there might have been a jersey change. So we'll just uh, confirm that for you in just a moment. So Vero Basso is on, the French-born player also as well. Sarah Alda for Wellington United. The goal scorer has been substituted. Basso, really interesting player. She's 40 years of age. She's been playing socially for the third team. But uh, we'll take that story in just a moment as we see Foster trying to cook something up, and that's going to come to nothing. So Basso playing in the third team, Priscilla. Caught a few eyes with the way she was playing, and uh, she got, let's say, gently encouraged to uh, to play in the uh, in the first team, and here she is. Yeah, hails from France, and, and did make an appearance in the semi-final. So we'll see. She's got a bit longer to play in this one, almost 20 minutes. There's Sarah Alder there, putting in a good shift, putting the goal up, putting the goal up. Wow, fantastic hitter it was. Here come Hamilton Wanderers again. Evans. Nicely anticipated. A good challenge. Pippi Oliver Bell. Just hold it up just for a fraction. Foster back to win the ball nice and cleanly. Again, she's having a strong game, Michaela Foster. Who, as we mentioned earlier, is the daughter of Ian Foster, the All Blacks coach. Coached a few teams that would have played at the stadium. Absolutely. Now, Elliot. And that one just falling harmlessly to Simons. I mentioned before that Chelsea Elliott and Foster can certainly score from close range, from <laughs> from far out, but I think they're being a little ambitious there. Wellington United keeping them at bay. They won't mind that too much. I think it's the balls in behind for Helena Jamandi that uh, they'll be wanting to avoid. Nice turn. And referee playing a little advantage, I suspect, there. No, she didn't think there was anything wrong there, so it's play on, and Wanderers are back in possession. Ajamundi chasing this one through. Wild, though. Oh, put Simons under pressure, but they got out of it. Oh, that's well done. And nice control from Oliver Bell. And now this could open up for Wellington United. As Maine, early ball through, and that player is onside, but the ball is just playing a little bit too far. The other thing on the line today is a player of the match who uh, will win the Maya Jackman trophy, of course, legend of the women's game here in New Zealand. So we have to find out who uh, they do uh, give the MVP today from these two sides. Yes, it's going to be interesting. It's a uh, no real standout play. It is there, Priscilla. Really, it has been a, and I don't mean that, uh, you know, in a bad way. I just think that's a good, good thing because there's been a lot of good performances in the game by a lot of players. Yeah, and I think especially with this Wellington United side, they are a tight unit, and you can really start to see this. I think that. Many of the players have played together for a number of years now, so they have really good understanding. You saw just before Rosie Wilde and, and Molly Simons just at the back and quite quite comfortable and knowing each other and how they play. There's Simons again very composed at the back. And perhaps she even has a shout for player of the day after that crucial uh, save she made earlier in the second half against Helen Ajamundi. It was only just after that that Wellington United uh, scored the, the goal to put them ahead. That's it. Dead right is Oliver Bell now. Just to put the foot down and create something here, but that is good work coming in by Ollington. 
Yeah, so what? A few tired legs out there too, I think. You'd start to say perhaps just a, a, a little sign of, of tiredness coming in, particularly with Hamilton Wanderers. I don't know if it's just me, but uh, and, and I was going to say they have a nicely balanced squad in the fact they've got some older players, but maybe that'll count against them in this pre-season sort of game. Well, let's see what happens here as Carpenter looks to find Ajumundi. The Hamilton Wanderers bench is up there and straight at Simons. Oh, you want that one in the corners, don't you? Oh, boy. Great play by here, here, just to let it run past her, showing her experience, but then can't get the shot away from Molly Simons. But it's good positioning from the goalkeeper. I've got to hand it to her. Well, we just saw the, the bench all rise up, thinking there's a big chance coming here. But Simons made that look easy, didn't it? That save of hers. Main in space. Tantalising ball. Bad one, two. Forced the defensive clearance from Tiana Hill. Gemma Catherwood to take this throw in. Oh, plenty of blue jumpers there to cut that one out. And Hill was on it in a flash. Naja Mundi lets it run past her again. But in the end, it's going to be comfortably sealed off this time by Wellington United. And Rosie Wild. Deliver a lovely ball. And here's a chance for Wellington United. Through. That was Grange over there, but it was easily cut out by Elliott. Perhaps just putting those crosses in a little bit too early, Wellington United, and, and not letting their strikers and midfielders come through with only one to aim at in the box is not quite so effective. Catherwood again. Good player to bring on. She's very composed and calm. Left back. Just a straight swap there with Zoe Barrett. And it's well won by Strom in midfield, but here comes Foster coming through the centre. Michaela Foster, what a great run. Just lost it in the last moment. She managed to get through there. That might have been really interesting as Main lays the header off. Hill. And Hamilton Wonder is happy to build from the back once more. Hill once more. Nicely brought to deck there. And now Main can turn. There goes that silky skills from Emma Main. Holds it up for Grange. Rolson, there's Main flicking it on, and Oliver Bell. And God Bowl was there to pinch it. That was better from the United side with Main coming through from midfield, so there are at least two to aim for in the box. And they saw again a really lovely turn. Beat the defender. Carpenter and Ajamandi up there. But again, it's handled by the Wellington United defence and will be there throwing. Nice play there from Catherwood. Very composed play. Rosie Wild, it was in fact with that composed play. It was good work from her. He's main. And, uh, Who's this uh, cross? Main just flicking it on, and if that one had just dropped to the feet there of Oliver Bell. A couple of players now down with a bit of cramp, or maybe this one's an injury. I think that's Tiana Hill we're looking at. Has played uh, over in, sta in the States as well, played at California Baptist University, new one year old. She played in the uh, New Zealand under 20 side along with. Michaela Foster, so they've also got a, a good understanding, the two of them, in the, in the back line. And that's uh, what we, Wellington United will have to be a little bit careful of. You saw them on the attack there with Emma Main in the box, but uh, just down the other end, I guess they could have also conceded. So 
You don't want to sit back when you're 1-0 up, but uh, equally you don't want to push too many forward and get, get caught out. Got a chance here for Coach Ratahuli to just bark some instructions to a team likewise. Management there of Hamilton Wanderers all in there. Trying to find that something extra. I'll get the scores back on level terms. Yeah, the coach for Wellington United, Mike Ratahuli, will know what this is all about. She's won the W League herself. Has also um, played with Wellington United in, in 2016 when they won the title before sort of turning to to coaching. So um, she's also an assistant coach to Maya Vink down in the capital for the um, National League series. So uh, good to see you know more female coaches. And we've just celebrated Girls and Women's Month this March from New Zealand Football, doing a lot of activities across the country. So. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll see the more and more um, female coaches coming through as well. Absolutely. Maine's got it back for Wellington United. Olsen couldn't quite find Maine again and nicely anticipated by Hill to pinch it back for Wanderers. Bremner plays that one forward. Main, great ball. Up one side. It might be Catherwood who's come up there. Hooks it back nicely, but no one quite there to have a crack. And in the end, Elliot can clear it. Good play from Wellington United coming forward on that occasion. That's good hustle. Coming through from Carpenter. The substitutes for Hamilton Wanderers. Coming away is Lynch Gerard and Maine's got it once again. A chance for Strom just to settle it down. And Gilchrist and Wild again at the back for Wellington United. Again doing a good job. Six minutes to go. This is good pressing and pressure from Oliver Bell. You can see the throw, but that's good to see that from a striker. Good work. Here come Wanderers sneaking through here. Plenty of orange jumpers back, though. Najamandi lurking there, but it couldn't get through the orange traffic. Foster. Bremner. Here's a chance here for Hamilton Wanderers. Big chance here. And has it gone out for a corner? No, it's a goal kick. But again, you could see in the forefront there, all the Hamilton Wanderers players were up. Yeah, she got a good side on, on goal there, but uh, just hooking it wide in the end. Very much uh, a good opportunity for Hamilton Wanderers. You know, this is your last opportunity. Yes, until the next time. Wanderers. Still looking to apply some pressure. And uh, no good. Oliver Bell. Good ball coming in here from Ollington. There's a... Oh, Jamandi just dribbled away from her at the last minute. Pressure remaining here. Look at all the orange jerseys back there as Foster. Can't get a good crack from long range away. Up, 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 up. 
I think Foster from, from Hamilton Wanderers has had the most shots for her side, but Leeds uh, United won't mind that from distance. And that one will be Hamilton Wanderers. And I think we've got another sub coming on, Priscilla. Yeah, it looks like Lily Brazendale and Grace Cox coming on for Wanderers. Grace Cox, a very handy player to, to come on. As I said, I think uh, she's been in Melbourne, uh, has already relocated there, but uh, came back. And she was one of those players, along with Shannon Drebs, who's come through the Hamilton Wanderers youth system, 21-year-old. Uh, and then Lily Brazen, uh, Brazendale's only 15, so, so one for the future. And she did come on in the semi-final as well late. Another sub coming up for Wellington United as well. Get to that in a minute as we see Hamilton Wanderers starting to enjoy more possession and now uh, to Priscilla as they come forward again. And that's a good effort coming through here. And again, it's frantically cleared away by Wild, I think, that time. As Wayne wins the ball. That's a good hustle from her. Really pressing well now, Hamilton Wanderers winning those uh, balls as Foster comes over to the right-hand side now to win possession for her team. Nicely kept in field, but again, Wellington United seal it off, don't they? Gemma Catherwood in the uh, left back role has, has made a real impact, I think, one of the subs that stood out for me. I think had a good shout to be a starter for Wellington United, but she's made her mark since coming on, been very, very solid. Well, three minutes to play. Time really against Hamilton Wanderers now, and on comes Gemma Robertson, 24-year-old for Wellington United, normally a starting player, just coming back from illness. Played five of the six games last year for Capital in the South Central Series. Scored two goals as well. I like that from the coach because Gemma Robertson has been at the heart of this team for Wellington United. Started all of the Kate Shepard Cup games as top goal scorer along with Pepe Oliver-Bell. Definitely would have been starting this game had it not been for uh, coming back. And uh, really nice to get to get her on to experience this if they do go on to win it. Absolutely. She's the actually the club's leading scorer over the last year. And 17 goals in 17 games last year, Gemma Robertson, for... Wellington United. Sister is Mickey Robertson, who's gone on to represent the Football Ferns and one of the players that would have also been uh, involved in this game, perhaps, but she's moved on and, and is training with the Wellington Phoenix Academy to, to try and keep up at that top level. Well, those balls are just not finding the mark up front, aren't they, for Hamilton Wanderers? As we enter the last minute of normal time, I'm sure we have a few minutes of added time. Here comes Hamilton Wanderers again, and there's a vital clearance. I think from Wild, who's starting to play very well for her team. Hamilton Wanderers playing very high now, throwing everything at it. And uh, who knows, we might see the goalkeeper come up at some point as they get pretty desperate for this equaliser, but Wellington United holding out on so far. Well, again, excellent commitment coming through here from, from Wanderers. But Oliver Bell has pinched it, and Ollington looks like she might have picked up a knock there, but she's trying to run it off. Hamilton Wanderers captain. You can see her just stretching her legs there. It's Kim McGuire wearing 17. In fact, we've been told for Hamilton Wanderers, the New Caledonian international. Looks like Maddie Ollington took a bit of a knock there. Looks in a bit of pain, which would be a shame if she has to go off in these uh, last few minutes. Well, we've ticked over the 90-minute mark. We've been told there's seven minutes of added time. Seven minutes. And I think it's going to be a bit more than seven minutes by the time we get these cramps out of the way to Priscilla. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a nervy finish, I guess. Any time there's more than five minutes of extra... <laughs> Injury time, it's, um, you never want to see that if you're the team in the lead. As we mentioned, this is Kim McGuire on the ball. 
who was born in New Caledonia, has uh, played as a striker for, for the national team there. Also played over in France. Yeah, good player. Oliver Bell, but Maguire's dispossessed here. And the pressure's going to stay on here. We've got a very congested final third of the field here. Just about every player is somewhere in there. Wellington Wanderers wouldn't the throw it. Wellington's okay again. Maguire will just hook it in. This could be interesting. Simons is there. Has a flick in. Simons, spectacular save. As we mentioned, Hamilton Wanderers pushing all of their players forward. I think it's Chelsea Elliott in the box there, usually in this heart of defence, but getting in there for anything. And it's very well picked up by Molly Simon. She has had a fantastic game in goal for Bunkton United. And if they go on to win it, then uh, she can take a lot of the credit. Well, that was a near thing, wasn't it? Now, Brazendale's won it. She's starting to impose herself as well as Elliott who's been pushed into a striker's position. Remember, she's a central defender, but she is a former striker. So that's an interesting tactical change. Maguire takes the throw in quickly. Mundy, that's a good challenge coming in. From I think number 13 it was there. Rosie Wilde, who's made some big challenges in these last uh, 15 minutes. Yeah, she's been absolutely key as well for this United side, I think. I guess through the guts has, has been the, the players that have stood out for me, not only Molly Simons in goal, but uh, Rosie Wilde has had a fantastic game and also Emma Main. I think probably those three uh, have stood out for me and, and Gemma Catherwood, I think, perhaps the pick of the subs coming on as well. So everyone kind of playing their part. Well, the pressure's remaining on here. As Bremner tries to find Elliot. Main just gets rid of the ball. Anywhere will do now for Wellington United. Four minutes to go. Kate Shepherd Cup on the line here. Remember, neither of these teams have ever won it before. Asha Mundy, I wonder if she snuck in from an offside position there. But in the end, it's going to be a corner. Again, that was Catherwood with a crucial uh, deflection and uh, nervy finish here with the goal in the injury time so let's see if Hamilton Wanderers can pull off some magic here well Foster will come over to take the corner it's going to be cleared away is it there's a shot but it's straight at Simons Simons will just get rid of it try and use her pace to get on the ball and she's done brilliantly there in the main just slowing things down that's uh, exactly what you want at the stage of the game and a perfect ball through for Gemma Robertson Robertson can't get past God bold it's still there wow that was almost a big chance to go 2-0 up chance for a penalty there too from uh, Robertson but uh, the referee wasn't having any of it uh, she wasn't as McGuire tries to get rid of it she can't get rid of it Oliver Bell has it again. Pippi Oliver Bell. Surely looking for the corners at this stage of the game. Well, I still thought there was going to be some drama coming, and there still could be. Look at the space here for Hamilton Wanderers. As Foster comes forward, so good on the ball. Elliott, nice touch. Ajamundi gives it back to Foster. Foster couldn't hook it back in front of Brazendale. And Simons is there again, the safe hands of Molly Simons. Nice interchange there, and again, those three players have probably been the standouts for Hamilton Wanderers too. Elliot and Foster getting forward there. The two, side, two, teams, two players are actually leaving the club, but doing their best to win it before they go. Well, that was a well-won challenge from Ollington. Swing the forward there was Maguire, but she couldn't link up with the teammate. And Emma Main's got it. There's that clever little back heel to Robertson. Well, we've got just over a minute to play. 
desperate stuff here, but as I mentioned before, Wellington United have been here before. They've played a couple of extra time games in this Kate Shepherd Cup, and you just get that sense they have the belief, they have the confidence. They know they can hold out, so let's see if they can do it. Barley nicely positioned there as Brazendale looks to win it for Hamilton Wanderers. She can't do it. Wellington United won't be in any hurry to take this throw in. Monday, one last chance, lovely touch to Elliott. Another crucial interception at the back there for Wellington United. Nervy stuff here. I'm sure all their fans at the Hunter Lodge down in Wellington watching this live will be on the edge of their seats. Well, they won't be sitting, Priscilla. They'll be standing, surely, as we tick down these vital few seconds. Oh, Maine's pinched it. Here comes Emma Maine. She's on there, lonesome. Oh, here comes Oliver Bell linking up with her as well. Maine. Oh, lovely stop from Godbold. Good play from Emma Main. Maybe could have linked up with Oliver Bell, but still props to the keeper. Both keepers have played excellent in this uh, final, but uh, again, you see Emma Main just stretching her legs, and that's the danger in these final stages. Uh, Wellington United will slow this down as much as they can. There can't be much longer than a minute to go. I just wonder if they should just play around with it in the corner, as you often see uh, you, they do, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And that will be Hamilton Wanderers ball, but they're out of time, and Wellington United have won the Kate Shepherd Cup for the first time. It's been a tight match. Just the one goal in it, scored midway through the second half by Sarah Alder. But the cup is heading to Wellington. You can see what it means to these players. A lot of them couldn't actually make that semi-final. They've gone through a, a bout of COVID. They've, they've gone through delays. They've started this back in June last year. Uh, no team for Wellington have won this competition. But Wellington United, well, I mean, it, just credit to them and their coach. They played a, a, a solid game out there. They've won 1-0 just like their semi-final. That's all you need in the cup. And full credit to their defence. Uh, and uh, they've got their names on that trophy and they've made history for their club. Well, we heard from their assistant coach right at the start of the game. 120 years yep. this club's been going and they've won it for the very first time. Wow, that's uh, amazing. You can imagine what you've been if you've been involved with the club to finally achieve something like this, Priscilla, is pretty special. Yeah, and credit to Hamilton Wanderers as well. They uh, gave it everything out there. You could see some tired legs, perhaps just didn't have the best preparation. They've had players who couldn't make trainings because of lockdowns, as you see here. Some of the highlights from the game, Wellington uh, United probably could have had one in the first half there. Um, couple of shots from out uh, long range, but uh, perhaps all the action came in, in the second half, really. Well, they did. The chances, too, were there for Hamilton Wanderers at times. A couple of big chances for Aja Mundi in the first half. And uh, that one there in the second, she just couldn't quite a good connection on it. But when she did get into space, Molly Simons was in the road every time, wasn't she? That was definitely their best chance of the game. And you'd expect, actually, former football fern to put that one away. She was there or thereabouts for that corner as well. And it was only just after this that, uh, I guess, almost against the run of play, you had Wellington United uh, break away, really, on the counter. So uh, great full credit to Molly Simons. She was just in the right position all day. And then uh, breaking away here, Danny Olsen, who didn't play the semi-final, very experienced player, putting in a perfect cross for Sarah Alder, Futsal Fern as well, and just directing her header downward, making it hard for the keeper, and 1-0 uh, up. Yeah, and that came against the run and play. In fact, it's interesting watching these highlights, Priscilla. The half chances were certainly more, more in the, with the team in blue, weren't they? Pepe Oliver Bell, again, this was a good one. The youngster who, who had a good game as well down on this left flank, putting the ball in and not quite finding Alder on that occasion. But, uh, yeah, Hamilton Wanderers certainly were trying to get it to their, their striker, Helen Ajumandi, and, and had some a lot of corners in the second half as well. But a uh, pretty even match, really. Yeah, sure was. And then that was Emma Main. 
just not quite getting the power on that header as she was hoping for. Maguire, she tried hard. This was a big chance for her near the end of the game, but again, couldn't maybe unleash the left foot there. And then Simons again with that great stop near the end of the game. Yeah, we saw them pushing forward the likes of Chelsea Elliott and even Michaela Foster was getting right up into the box in the last uh, stages. You saw them, here they were, just um, nice interchange, but Molly Simons just always in the right position and uh, perhaps one of their standouts today and, and almost a 2-0 win uh, when you look at, back at the highlights here as well with Emma Main and poor old Pippi Oliver-Bell doing one of those runs and not getting the ball, but <laughs> no complaints from the youngster. Well, in the end, it was a very tight game here in the Kate Shepherd Cup final. But it is the team in orange and blue who take the trophy back to Wellington. For the first time, they win the final by one goal to nil. So we're not too far away from having some after-match interviews. And, of course, the presentation, Priscilla, which you've uh, enjoyed twice in your career. A special moment coming up for the Wellington United players. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny these games that they are really memorable. I think you you play your season, you've got your regional league, which you always look forward to each year. But sort of you don't remember the perhaps the titles as much when it's the regional ones. It's the national competitions I think you really look forward to, and it's ones you get in the history books. And uh, I think uh, with Ellerslie and Western Springs, I had the pleasure of playing for um, <laughs> during my career and and being in this final and. Yeah, they're, they're really memorable for me as in my playing career and certainly for these players coming away from Wellington United after such a sort of challenge, so many delays, I think it will mean even more for them. Well, they were a four-time defending champion of the W League as well. So that is coming up again. And uh, who knows, we might see these teams featuring in, in the, we, we, what we hope, fingers crossed, will be a full-strength National League later on in the year. Yeah, it's a, they've really made a name for themselves. I guess you could call it the treble. They've also won the Kelly Cup, the sort of knockout cup down, cup down in, in Wellington, which is, I believe, the oldest trophy in women's football in, in New Zealand. So they've won that. They've won the W League down in Wellington. All right, let's get to some aftermatch reaction now. I think Fred Young, our man, is standing by with some aftermatch reaction. Well, Hope, congratulations. First time ever for Wellington United winning the Kate Shepherd Cup. What does that mean for you and the team? Uh, it's really special for us. Uh, it's obviously been a long, kind of drawn out process and we're just stoked to have got here and got the result. Thoughts on the game? Yeah, it was much more open, I thought, than the semi-final and I thought we were much better on the ball than we were against the Eastern Suburbs, so that was pleasing. But the yeah, under the pump at times, Keep came through when she needed to and I just thought everybody ran as much as they could. Yeah, last five minutes there was uh, all hands on deck, wasn't it? Yeah, last seven. I was pretty shocked when I saw that <laughs> extra time. But no, again, we just kind of sat deep, grinded it out and managed to get there. Well, congratulations again and uh, go and get a cup. Yeah, awesome. Thanks very much. Cheers. I hope Gil Chris there, the captain oh, yeah. of the Wellington Maddie. United team. We're going back to Fred now for some more reaction. Fred? I'm ready, yep. He's ready. Go, Fred. Well, Maddie, how, how disappointing was it to lose that game? Oh, I'm, I'm real gutted for the girls, to be honest. We've been working really hard for the last oh, couple of months to get to where we are. And, yeah, it's a real shame to have that result, but still proud of the girls for what they put in. Yeah, pretty even game, but you just you guys couldn't just couldn't land the killer blow. No, we couldn't. We tried so many times. We had so many opportunities on goal, but we just couldn't get one in the back of the net. And after they scored, how did you try and change to, to get back into it? Uh, we changed our formation, so we went to a four at the back to strengthen up our defence a little bit, but still just couldn't get anything forward. So we tried, but just couldn't get there. Well, hard luck again. Appreciate it. Thank you. She's very hungry. Yeah, Matty Ollington, near the captain of the Hamilton Wanderers team. And I think those... Summaries pretty much sum up the feelings of both cabs as we now stand by for the presentation of the Kate Shepherd Cup, which was first won in 1994 by Nomads United in Christchurch. Dominated by Auckland teams through the years, but uh, 
not in 2021. <laughs> Even though it's March 2022, of course. So hopefully folks stay with us. We'll have the presentation of the trophy for you in just a moment. Let's go. I think we're all ready for the presentation now of the Cape Shepherd Cup. Ceremony for the 2021 New Zealand Football Foundation Cape Shepherd Cup. It is a pleasure to introduce you to you to New Zealand Football General Manager of Women's World Cup Legacy and Inclusion, Paula Hansen and Maya Jackman, former New Zealand firm. New Zealand Football would like to acknowledge all teams involved in the Football Federation Kate Shepherd Cup of 2021 and thank them for their commitment in completing this historic competition during these unprecedented times. We are delighted that we were able to welcome spectators into North Harbour Stadium. It is fantastic to the, and to the girls and women's month. Thanks to everyone present here and those who tuned in on Sky Sport. Next thanks to our partners Sky Sport to watch this 27th final of the Football Foundation Kate Shepherd Cup. Moving straight into the awards, we start with the presentation of the Maya Jackman Trophy for the most valuable player in the Football Foundation Kate Shepherd Cup final, presented by Maya Jackman herself. Joining the esteemed list of footballers to have won this award, the, award, the winner of the Maya Jackman Trophy is Emma Main from Wellington United. Well done, Emma. We know that no match is possible without match officials and we will now present commemorative medals to the referees of today's fixture. Our thanks to the match referee, Lindsay Robinson, assistant referees, Daniel Neville, and Alice Clipsham, and fourth official, Beth Rattray. The match official medals will be presented by Kevin Ford. Thank you again to the match officials. Please now join us in welcoming the runners-up for the 2021 Football Foundation Kate Shepherd Cup. Hamilton Wanderers, led by Madison Ollington. Well done, good game. Appreciate it, thank, thank you. you.
raining until December. And now, please welcome the winners of the 2021 Football Foundation Kate Shepherd Cup, Wellington United, to come and collect you with the medals. The medals will be presented by Paula and Maya. And finally, I'll now ask New Zealand Football General Manager of Women's World Cup Legacy and Inclusion, Paula Hansen, to hand over the Kate Shepherd Cup to Hope Gilchrist, Captain Wellington United. Please join us in congratulating Wellington United, winners of the Football Foundation Kate Shepherd Cup Final 2021. Well, there it is, Wellington United. Congratulations to them. It's going to be a uh, pretty pleasant flight going back to Wellington with the Kate Sheffer Cup safely tucked away for the rest of the year. And I'm sure they're going to get a hero's welcome when they get back to their club rooms where everyone involved with that club has been watching today. Not much in the game. Priscilla was there, but you really do have to appreciate the goal they scored. It was scored with great skill, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a close final, I think, expected, and not much between the two sides. Hamilton Wanderers can still go away with their heads held high. They have never made a final of this competition before. They'll know what they need to go and work on to, to win it. But I think Wellington United just had that cohesion. Uh, they just you know, understood each other, perhaps a bit, bit of fitness. Um, They've got a team that have been together a long time and they're staying together, uh, perhaps a slight difference. And they just look like they wanted a little bit more. And I guess, yeah, full credit to them. First team from Wellington to win this prestigious competition. So there we are, folks. We hope you enjoyed this uh, game today, the Kate Shepherd Cup final for this season here from North Harbour Stadium. On behalf of Priscilla Duncan and the entire team that brought you the coverage today, thanks for watching and we'll catch you for more football very soon. Mm -hmm.